What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a card deck with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at creating a deck of cards with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at creating a deck of cards. And I've got a very basic deck of cards here. When we click the button, we get two cards, one for the dealer, one for the player. And we can just kind of come through here and just go through the entire deck of cards. And then you can see here at the top, it shows the countdown of how many cards are left. Eventually, we have none. And that's it. We can shuffle the deck and start over and do this. Now, we're going to use this later on to create different card games. In this video, we're just going to set this up to where we can sort of create card images randomize them, shuffle them out in any way we want. In this case, I'm dealing them in a very basic way. Each player just gets one card. But once we have this foundation, we can easily, you know, create two cards for blackjack or five cards each for poker or whatever you want once you have this foundation. So in the next few videos, we're going to be looking at different card games and it's kind of fun. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, over 200. So check those out if you haven't so far. Okay, so I've got some basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. I'm calling it deck.py, and it's 900 by 500. I've set the background color to green. That's sort of a card type thing, poker table type green, you know what I mean? And uh, we're good to go. So let's just start out by roughing out the GUI for this thing. So the first thing we want is a frame. So I'm just going to call this my underscore frame. This is going to be a frame. We want to put it in root. And I guess we want the background color to be green. And then let's my underscore frame dot pack this guy. Let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. Now inside of this frame, we want two label frames, one for each card, one for the dealer, one for the player. So I'm going to call the first one dealer frame. And it's going to be a label frame. We want to put it in my frame. We want the text to say dealer. And for now, let's give this a border of zero. I don't want any actual box around it because the card is square itself. So we don't want to put a square card and then another box around it. It'll look a little weird. So I'll just take the border off. And so let's go dealer underscore frame. And I want to grid this guy. We want to put it in a row equals zero, column equals zero. And let's give this a pad X of 20 to push this apart from the other one we're about to create. Let's also give it an iPad X of 20 to give it some internal space. So the card isn't right up against the edge of it, right? Give it a little padding. So, okay, that looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and create another one called player frame and change this to player frame. And we want to put it in my frame. We want the text to say player. Again, no border. We don't really need to give this an extra pad X. This pad X will, you know, do the work in between them for us. So, okay, that looks good. So let's say uh, create frames for cards. Now, inside of each of these frames, we want to put the card themselves. And we're going to use a label for this. Put cards in frames, right? So the first one will be the dealer underscore label. And I'm calling these labels because these will be labels. We'll just put an image onto the label as we always do. That's how we use images with Kinter. And so this is going to be a label. We want to put it in the dealer underscore frame. And for now, we want the text to equal nothing. We don't want anything in there until we've sort of shuffled the cards or whatever, right? So let's dealer underscore label dot pack this guy. And let's give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down in the frame a little bit. And let's do the same thing here. Again, but here we're going to make this a player label, player label, and we want to put this in the player frame. Okay, that looks good. Finally, we want to create a couple buttons, right? The first one is going to be, let's call it shuffle underscore button, and it's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say shuffle deck. And we might want to make this font a little bit bigger. So let's give it a Helvetica and like a size 14, something like that. And let's go shuffle button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. So let's copy this guy again and do one more. And we'll call this one, I don't know, the card button <laughs> or the deal button maybe. So here we want to say get cards. Okay, that looks good. 
go ahead and save this and run it. We're not going to be able to see a whole lot here, but uh, just make sure there's no errors in there. So Python deck.py, I'm in my C GUI directory, and that looks good. And okay, we've messed something up because these two are right on top of each other. I know exactly what we did. I didn't change the row and the column here when I copied and pasted. So uh, let's come up here to the uh, this guy right here, the player frame, this should be column one instead of column zero. All right, that's why we run these things as we go along to make sure we don't make stupid mistakes like that. Okay, we've got these two boxes here, these two little frames, there's nothing in them yet. We've got a button here to shuffle and we've got a button to get the cards. Okay, looking good so far. So let's now create our deck of cards. How are we gonna do this? Now there are a thousand ways to create a deck of cards. And there are some with just a couple of lines of code. I'm not going to do that. I want to make it a little more explicit just to sort of show you my thinking behind this. But you could do this any way you want, right? So let's come down here to our shuffle button and let's give this a command of shuffle, right? So now let's create this shuffle function. Let's come up here to the top somewhere and let's say shuffle the cards, the cards. So let's define shuffle. So first off, let's sort of define the suits of the cards. There are four suits, right? Diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it suits. And this is going to be a Python list. And inside of here, I'm just going to call it diamonds. The next one I'll call clubs. The next one I'll call hearts. And the next one I'll call spades. Normal cards in a deck of cards, right? Now we also have values, right? So there's the two of clubs, the eight of hearts, the jack of diamonds, whatever. So we can create a range for this and cards start at two. There is no one card, right? So it starts at two and it goes up to 14. So the ace is the 14th card. So we want a range between two and 15. That should do it. So let's, uh, you know, define our deck. So, you know, if you're, if you're curious, you know, 11 will be jack, 12 will be let's say queen, 13 will be king, and 14 will be the ace, right? So let's now create our deck. I'm going to call global deck. I don't know if we actually need to make this global, but we're going to be sort of moving this around. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it global. And this is going to be a Python list, right? So let's say for suit in suits. So we want to sort of loop through these suits. And then inside of here, we want to loop again, let's say for value in values. So then inside of that, we want to loop through these things and we just want to assign things. So we can deck dot append and I'm going to make this an F string just for fun. And let's say value. I want to go underscore of underscore suit. And you'll see why I'm using underscores here in just a bit here. Okay. So if we want to see what this is, we can print out our deck. And let's run this guy. Clear the screen. There we go. So we could shuffle and when we close this, boom, you can see we get the two of diamonds, three of diamonds, four of diamonds, five of diamonds, six of diamonds, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 of diamonds. Then it drops down to the next one, two of clubs, three of clubs, four of clubs, then it drops down to the next one, two of hearts, 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 the next one, spades, spades, spades. So this is our entire deck. Now we can see, we can make sure we can see what's the length of our deck, right? How many actual cards are there? There should be 52. There's 52 cards in any deck of cards. So if we run this guy again, click shuffle, close this guy, we see 52. So, all right, this looks good. So we've got a deck of cards. It's in a Python list and we can do stuff with it. So let's now create our players while we're doing this here. So I'm going to call global and we want a dealer and a player, right? And so the dealer will have its own list and the player will have its own list. So now let's grab a random card. So we've got this deck, which is a list. We want to randomly select something out of it. And whenever we shuffle out the cards, right? So let's come up here and we want to import random. We've used the random library lots of times in the past here. So let's come down here and let's go, let's create a variable called card. We want here random dot choice. And what do we want to choose from the deck, right? So the first one will be for the dealer. Well, once we've taken a card out of the deck, we need to remove it from the deck, right? We don't want to be able to 
keep pulling the same cards out over and over. Once you use a card, you discard it in most card games, right? So let's go deck dot remove and we can remove the card. This will just remove it from our deck list, right? We also want to keep track of who's got that card. So let's call dealer dot append and we want to put the card in here. So here, let's say remove card from deck. And here, let's say append card to dealer list. All right now for now, before we actually have pictures of cards, let's just kind of put this up on the screen as text. So remember down here, we have a dealer label. So we can grab that here. And let's say uh, output card to screen. So we can say dealer label dot config. And for now, let's just set the text equal to card. All right? Let's say for dealer. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for the player. So let's come down here, grab a random card for player. So again, card equals random choice, we want to remove that choice from the deck. Here we want player dot append because that will come up here to our player list and add that card to our players list. Right. And then here we want to player dot config that card. So let's save this and run it and see if that worked. We did a bunch of stuff there and it's entirely possible. I messed something up. So here, let's click shuffle and boom, the two of hearts and the six of clubs. So, okay, that's pretty cool. Now up here at the top, whenever we do that, let's also print out how many cards are left in the deck, just so we can sort of keep track. So let's do that real quick. Super easy here. We can call our root dot title. Right, let me just copy this, bring it down here. And let's say put number of remaining cards in title bar. So here, I'm just going to turn this into an F string. And let's say what the length of the deck cards left. Okay, so save this and run it, make sure that worked. Shuffle, boom, 50 cards left. And that makes sense because there's 52 cards in a deck, we just drew two of them. So there should be 50 left. If we do this again, every time we do it, it's starting over again. So this will always say 50 cards. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's work on this get cards function, we want to sort of deal out more cards as we go along. So let's do that. So let's come down here to our button our card button. And let's give this a command of what do we want to call this guy deal underscore cards, something like that. that looks good. So now let's come up here. And deal out cards. So let's define deal cards. And I want to create a try accept block here because eventually we're going to run out of cards. And then our deck, this list here won't have any cards in it. And then we'll get a index out of range error for our list. So that'll be an error basically when we run out of cards. So instead of throwing an error, Let's just, uh, I don't know, do something else. Let's just change the title of our thing to say no cards in deck, or maybe game over or something like that. So okay, that'll work for now. So again, we want to get the dealer card. And then after that, we want to, you know, get the player card. And we can just pull the same stuff here, right? So I'm just going to copy this and pop it in here. So again, we're gonna, you know, grab a random card, remove it from the deck, append it to our player and then output that to the screen. Right? So actually, this should be dealer. And this should be dealer. Okay, so then we can paste the same thing in for this guy. And also we want to do this after each time. So come down here pop that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it see if that worked. Did that super fast. <laughs> I don't know if that worked or not. So let's shuffle the deck, we have 50 cards left, we can do it again. We have now 48 cards left. And we when we do it, we're pulling it two cards out. So there'll be two less every time we click this button. So we can keep going, keep going, keep going, click, 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 down to two cards left, we do it one more time. Now there's zero cards left. If I click it again, we get this thing up here that says no cards in deck. We can click this and the whole thing starts over, right? So that looks good. One thing I want to do though is let's see when we run this guy, 
it starts out with nothing here. We have to click shuffle the deck and let's change that to just shuffle itself automatically when the game starts. So we could just come down here to the bottom and just call the shuffle function like that. That should work. Let's run this guy again just to make sure. Sure enough, we got a two of spades and the six of hearts right here. 50 cards left. We didn't have to click the shuffle deck. Anytime we can click the shuffle deck button to start over and you can see there's 50 cards and that looks good. Okay, so strictly speaking, we are done. This video is getting a little bit long and we haven't talked about the images at all yet. So I think we can knock this out in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and do this now instead of saving it till the next video because this is the fun part, right? So let me pull up an explorer here and you can see I've got these cards. I just found these for free online and I saved them in my GUI images cards directory. Our GUI directory is where we're doing our coding. Inside of that, I've got this images directory that I always have images in. Inside of that, I created another directory called cards, and these are just the cards, right? You can use any cards you want, I'd find them online. You could probably download these from my GitHub account if you wanna use these specific cards, but use any card you want. So if I click on one of these, you can see here it is, and you can see when I make this bigger, these cards are gigantic. So we're gonna have to resize these, uh, but we can do that. And you'll notice how they're named two underscore of underscore clubs, two underscore of underscore diamonds, right? Well, that corresponds with this here. This is how I name them up here. And that's why I use these underscores because we can now just take this and use it to open the image of that card name. It's just an easy workaround. So, okay, let's start to set this guy up. So we're gonna need a few things. First off, we're gonna need to resize these images because they're very big. I wanna make them smaller in the app but I might wanna use them big for another program. So I'm not gonna like change them in Photoshop. Instead, I'm just gonna resize them in our app here. And we've done this in other videos in the playlist. So we need from PIL, which is the Python image library. We wanna import image and also image TK. Now, if you don't have PIL installed in your computer, come back over to your terminal and then just go pip install pillow. I've already got it, so it's saying, hey, you've already got it, but if you don't, it will install, and then you're ready to go. So, okay, let's come down here, and let's create a new function called resize image, or resize cards, right? So let's go define resize underscore cards, and I wanna pass in a card here, and for now we can just pass. So let's start with our shuffle. The first thing we do when the, the app starts, here we're outputting the card to the screen. Well, we know what the card is, right? Right there. And that's gonna be the two underscore of underscore spades or whatever, right? That's what this card is. So instead of appending it as text, we can append this as an image. So let's start to do that. So first, let's define our image. And this, we need to make this global because we're gonna be using this in different functions. And when you use images with Kinter in different functions, you have to make them global or the Kinter garbage collection will sort of sweep it away and it won't work. So I'm gonna call this first one dealer image, right? Because this is gonna be for our dealer. So let's create the dealer image and that's gonna be resize cards, right? Because we're gonna call this function every time we call a card because we need to resize it first and we need to pass in the card that we wanna resize. So we can come down here and here it is, resize cards. And I'm gonna create an F string and this is just gonna be images slash cards because this is where my card images are. We can use a relative path like this because this whole bit of code is being saved in our C GUI directory where this images and this cards directory is. Otherwise, you would have to define it. You would have to go, you know, GUI slash images. But like I said, we don't have to do that. So slash cards slash. Now here, this is gonna be card. That's this thing right here. And then these are gonna be PNG files. So this is gonna be .png. So this is the path to the card. We're gonna pass that into our resize cards. It will resize the card, send it back, and then we can output it. So once we have resized it, let's see, where are we at here? Uh, shuffle, shuffle, where's our shuffle app? There we go, here it is. Then here is what the image is gonna be. Instead of having text equals, we want this to be image equals, boom, dealer image. Okay, 
Now, while we're at it, we want to do the same thing for our player. So let's come down here to our player. And there we go. This is instead going to be a player image. And player image. And player image. And this guy will be player image. And there's a guy outside that sounds like he's got a leaf blower making noise. I hope you guys can't hear that. But if you can, sorry, he'll be gone in a minute. <laughs> so, okay, so we're passing the path into this resize card function. Now we need to actually resize those images and then pass it back. How do we do that? Well, first, let's open the image. So I'm going to call this r underscore card underscore image. And this is going to be an image dot open and we want to pass in the card. That's that path of that card. And image dot open is just this guy up here that we imported from pill. So that will open the image. Now let's resize the image. So I'm going to call this R card resize image. I don't know, whatever. And this is just going to be this guy right here. Boom. Dot resize. And then you just pass in the parameter. So I want this to be 150 by 218. So this is width and height, right? So width 150, height 218. And I just know based on what the image was originally, the aspect ratio, I just fiddled with it until I got it to the size that I wanted. And that's what it is. So here, let's call global and then create a variable called our card image. And let's say output the card. So our underscore card underscore image is going to equal now an image TK dot photo image. And that's just this guy up here. And it's just going to be whatever this is. So I can copy and paste. And now let's return that card. So let's just call return and then pass that. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it and see if that worked. And boom, we get a queen and a seven of spades. If we click shuffle, we get different cards. Very cool. Now, if we click get cards, nothing has happened. So we'll have to tinker with that. So we can come up to our shuffle cards. And basically, we can just copy these three lines of code again, create the image path, pass it in pass it into the resize function, output it back to the label. So again, just copy these guys and come down to our deal cards function. And same thing here where we output these cards to the screen, I'm just going to paste this in. And this is the actually the dealer image. So let's go dealer image, change this to dealer image, change this to dealer image, dealer label, and then this one also to dealer image and we can output that and we can get rid of that if we want. And again, same thing, come down here to this. And that should be good. And also we can comment that out. Okay, so let's save this and run it. That should do the trick. So here we get a six and a jack. We play if we say get cards, boom, we get two new cards. This is 48 cards left. And we can just continue on through bump up 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 up. And on eight, two cards left, no cards left. We click it another time. Up here it says no cards in deck. Now maybe we could remove these two cards at the end, or you could do something else. I'll leave that to you. We'll pull it, we'll work on that more in the next video when we make an actual game out of this. But yeah, we're we're good to go. So we can click shuffle the deck and boom, it starts it over. Very cool. So pretty easy. We've created a deck of cards. We've sort of linked it with images. We've created a a list of what, who has what cards and when, and we can start over, we can get different cards, we can keep track of how many cards are left, and we now have a really good foundation of any card game. So like I said, we can expand this really easy to make blackjack, for instance. It's the same concepts. We're dealing cards, we're shuffling cards in the deck, we're outputting actual images onto the screen and keeping track of what player has what cards. And uh, really just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 47 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.